Living his whole life in a classroom, this old Tuatara has plenty of knowledge. When he realizes he's going to die soon, he decides to spend his remaining days giving the students life-changing tips. But he breaks an important rule of the animal kingdom. It's the start of a new academic session in Fort Myers Elementary School. Several new kindergartners join the school while the fifth graders will be shifted to the second floor. As they get in their new classroom, they start sharing how they spent the annual break and what are their plans after graduating out. Beside the kids, the class pets, a tuatara named Leo and a tortoise named Squirtle are also excited for the new batch. Leo observes every student and tell Squirtle how there's every type of student in this batch like every year. The Patriot, the Clean Freak, the Class Clown, the Popular Girl, and the First Child Who Can't Stop Talking. Their homeroom teacher, Mrs. Salinas, enters the class excitedly and greets the students. She appreciates the kids for reaching the final year and wishes them best of luck. They must give their best performance to achieve a big reward at the end of the year. All three sections of fifth grade will be competing in different categories, and the winner will get a full-day trip to a special place. Mrs. Selena starts teaching science and asks students different questions. Suddenly, she feels nauseated and starts vomiting. Mrs. Selena is pregnant and she can't keep teaching right now. Therefore, the principal holds a parent-teacher meeting to inform the parents about Mrs. Selena's maternity leave. The parents started to complain about the change as they didn't like the substitute teacher when she taught their kids in grade 3. Principal tries to calm them down and assures that he will choose a good substitute. Some of the parents stand beside the classroom pet and start discussing how old the pets look. One of them says that a tuatara hardly lives for 75 years, and Leo seems to be reaching that age. Leo gets really angry after being called old. But then he realizes how lazy and cranky he has become. He never counted his age, but he was brought here when he was a baby. Leo remembers seeing the year 1949 on the calendar. The next day, he starts counting all the years to know his age, but Leo has forgotten basic math. Squirtle tells him that the basics are taught in grade 2, so the pets in that class may know how to calculate age. To meet the other pets, Leo makes a foolproof plan. He uses his long tongue to trigger the fire alarm. All the classrooms are evacuated and the pets are gathered in one place. Leo asks the grade 2 pets about his age and gets to know that he is already 74. He has just one more year to live. Leo gets depressed and quiet. Squirtle gets worried and tries to cheer him up. He advises Leo to work out and adopt a healthy lifestyle. This may add some years to his life, but Leo is too old to do such things now. He has already wasted his life. When someone realizes that he is going to die soon, he starts regretting all the things he couldn't do in his life. Leo does the same. He never ate a snail, never hunted for food because he was fed by the humans without making an effort. He never went near a lake or chased other animals. He never got to spend the wildlife he deserved. While Leo is busy regretting his life, an old chubby woman enters the class with cold expressions. She doesn't bother to greet anyone and sets up her desk. It's Miss Malkin, the substitute teacher. The students get frightened by her scary aura and begs Mrs. Salinas to stay a little longer. Mrs. Salinas agrees to stay for today, but Miss Malkin forces her out of the classroom. She uses her vacuum to pull off all the hearts from the appreciation chart. She believes that students are supposed to get knowledge in school, not frequent appreciation. She also makes new rules and announces that one kid must take the classroom pet home every weekend. The kid must feed it and bring it back in healthy condition. This activity will teach them responsibility. The pets are not delighted to hear that because the last time kids took them home, they forgot to feed them on time. Suddenly, Leo gets an idea. If he is taken to a kid's house, he may get a chance to escape to the wild and live his life in freedom. Summer, the girl who talks too much, volunteers to take the pet home. Squirtle wishes Leo best of luck and advises him to beware of the wild animals. Summer has a warm family and a cozy room. She puts Leo in a safe place and goes downstairs. But she doesn't shut her mouth while doing all that. Leo sees an open window and gets ready to escape. He starts climbing the wall, but he is way too slow. Summer spends some time with her family and keeps telling them her endless stories. Several hours pass by, but Leo hardly covers half of the distance. Summer returns to her room and continues talking to herself. She notices that Leo is missing and starts to panic. She unintentionally hits Leo and he lands back near his cage. Leo gets frustrated and accidentally speaks. The animals are forbidden to talk to humans, so Leo tries to convince Summer that the statue was the one who just talked. She starts babbling again, and Leo speaks again to make her shut up. Summer panics to see a talking animal, but Leo requests her not to tell anyone. He also lies that she is special and the only human who can listen to him. Summer feels touched as she never was called special. She shares her problem with Leo and tells him that she doesn't realize when and how much she should talk. She just gets overwhelmed easily and people are too nice to tell her to stop talking. Leo explains to her that if she likes talking about herself, others like that too. She should give them a chance as well. The best way to do that is to question. This will make others comfortable around her and she will gain more friends. Summer thanks Leo for the advice and goes to sleep. The next morning at the school, Squirtle mocks Leo for being a coward who couldn't escape. 
Leo gets angry and says that he will definitely escape next weekend. Meanwhile, Summer acts upon his advice and gains more friends. Even the popular girl Jada starts to like her. Summer says thanks to Leo, which makes Squirtle suspicious. He wonders why a young girl would like an old cranky pet like Leo. The next weekend, Summer volunteers again to take Leo home. But Miss Malkin wants another kid to do that. An introverted boy named Lee volunteers and takes Leo home. But his overprotective parents don't let him have any fun. Billy's friend comes to play at his house, but his parents force Lee to play while wearing a protective suit so he doesn't get any germs from Leo. They even make the dog wear a protective suit. Moreover, Illy is always accompanied by an AI robot who does everything for him. It's not as good as it sounds because Illy never gets to enjoy doing anything by himself. His friend feels uncomfortable in such circumstances and excuses himself earlier than he planned. Illy goes to his room and Leo finally gets a chance to escape. He gets out of his box but his tail gets stuck in the robot cleaner. The whole living room turns into a mess and Leo's tail gets cut off. Luckily, it will grow again. Illy comes to check on him and puts a bandage on Leo's tail. Leo accidentally talks again and tells the same lie that Illy is the only special child to whom Leo talks. Illy gets comfortable and talks out his heart. He is so fed up with the AI drone who always sticks to him. Illy doesn't know how to tell the robot to stay away from him without hurting its feelings. Leo is willing to help and suggests that Illy should write a letter. After reading that Illy wants personal space, the AI drone starts staying away from Illy. Finally, the kid gets to enjoy his life and make some friends. The next day, parents gather at the school again and complain about Miss Malkin's strict teaching methods. But Miss Malkin doesn't care about the complaints at all and keeps being the rude and sarcastic lady she is. As Friday arrives, Summer and Lee volunteer for the pet day again and mention how great Leo is. Hearing this, the popular girl Jada claims that she is the one who deserves best, so she will take Leo home. Jada's family looks like a modern and sophisticated family, but in reality, they are just obsessed with perfection and don't enjoy the small moments of life. Moreover, they also force Jada to achieve the best. Jada is worried about her upcoming birthday party because she believes that it will not be as perfect as she wants. Others will make fun of her because they are jealous. Hearing this, Leo decides to advise her too. Jada is startled at first to see a talking animal but Leo tells her the same lie. Afterwards, he listens to her problem. Just like the rich and pretty celebrities, Jada is popular but people usually secretly hate her. They don't understand the pressure Jada is dealing with. Her parents have made a standard and she is forced to live up to it. Leo tells her that she or her family is not as great as they think and that's fine. No one is perfect. Everyone has some flaws. The best thing is to accept your true self and embrace it confidently. Jada should free herself from the perfectionist burden and enjoy being a normal kid. Jada liked what she heard. She rushes to change her limited guest list, and she invites all of her class fellows to her birthday party. Jada also changes her personality and behaves more friendly. Her father made huge preparations for the party and even built a small zoo with rare animals. Leo talks to the animals and realizes how homesick they are. They want to be free from the cages. Leo is already planning to run away, so he he decides to let the zoo animals escape along with him. He takes help from Summer and opens the cages. All the animals run away and Leo follows them too. The kids start looking for him and call out his name. Leo is just a step away from freedom, but he realizes that the kids need him, so he turned back. Summer hugs him and thanks him for letting her have such a great birthday. Summer even gives him a phone so she can talk to him later. Squirtle finally understands the situation and scolds Leo for talking to the humans. Leo replies that he is just trying to help. It's about sharing his 74 years of wisdom to help these kids with their issues. To help Squirtle understand, Leo keeps sharing his conversations. He recently helped a boy dealing with his puberty, and Leo made him gain confidence. The next kid was a boy who was insecure about his voice and kept faking it. But Leo helped him realize that his voice is special, and he can become a great singer. The kid was encouraged and even sang in school play. And then there was the shy girl, Mia. Her parents recently divorced, and she is deeply traumatized by that. She is a genius with a natural talent in science, but she never had the guts to showcase her skills. Leo cheered her up and admired her skills. He reminded Mia of her late grandfather. He was her best friend, but after he died, Mia became introverted. Leo sang her a lullaby and also listened to her thoughts, and that helped Mia feel a lot better. Leo just wants the kids to remember something good about him after he dies. After all the kids complete their turn, it's Anthony's responsibility to take care of the pet. Leo gets scared as Anthony is the notorious school bully. This time Squirtle sneaks in with Leo to show him that he can also help the kids. Unfortunately, not everyone is a good listener. Anthony gets really angry at Squirtle's useless talk and punishes him. Later that night, Leo takes his turn to talk to Anthony. He tells him that there's a good boy hidden inside him. There's still time for him to change and live his childhood happily before it ends. Anthony softens and decides to improve himself. 
Leo becomes everyone's favorite and they all want to take him home. Miss Malkin takes advantage of the situation and announces that only the kids who perform well in class will take Leo home. In this way, all kids start working hard and excel in studies. Leo doesn't even get to rest during the weekdays as the kids keep calling him. Squirtle gets jealous and exposes Leo by filming him live. The kids confront Leo because each one of them thinks that he is special, and Leo only talks to him. It's Friday, but no one takes him home. Finally, Miss Malkin arrives and takes Leo home. She showed him the yearbooks and revealed that she used to be a sweet student because of her kind teachers. But now, she is just a substitute. Leo understands her loneliness and suffering, and he advises her to be the teacher she got as a kid. If she wants to be praised, she must work for it. It's already the last month of the academic year. The kids compete with other sections and win the best class award and the fun trip. Moreover, Miss Malkin is declared as the best teacher. She gets overwhelmed with the praise and decides to take all the credit. She tells Leo that the class lost the competition because of him. Afterwards, she leaves him in the wild and returns home. Leo suffers at first, but then he meets several friendly animals. The other two Ataras tell him that 75 is not the average age and they may live up to 100 plus years. After hearing this, Leo wishes that he could spend these years with the kids. Meanwhile, Miss Malkin tells the kids that Leo left by himself. But Squirtle knows all the truth. He regrets what he did and decides to fix his mistake. Healy's drone and reaches the school bus which is heading towards the theme park. Squirtle tells the kids everything and makes Miss Malkin apologize. They trick the sports teacher who was driving the bus and they take over the bus themselves. Afterwards, they head to the wild. After scaring away the crocodiles, they find Leo's skin and assume him dead. They all confess how Leo helped them lead a better life. Leo gains confidence and steps forward to greet the kids. They all get really delighted and take him back. All the kids graduate and ask Leo how they are going to survive without him. But Leo assures them that they are ready to face the problems by themselves. Miss Malkin is promoted to a permanent position and she requests the principal to let her keep Leo and Squirtle always in her class. Everyone's scared, so don't keep it to yourself. Find your Leo to talk to. It could be your teacher, your mom, your friend. They're ready to listen and they'll make you feel better.